What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media bringing you yet another episode of Pokemon X and Y Battle Spot Live. Today's episode is number 54. Coming into today's episode, we are sitting nice and pretty still at that 20 game differential after a double victory broke our losing streak last time. So, I think our record is 62 and 42. Hopefully we can break uh, through that 20 game differential today. We'll see what happens. We're still a little bit in a slump though because we lost uh, like four games in a row. We had uh, two episodes in a row with uh, double losses, so that was unfortunate. Last time we defeated that minimized Chansey for a double victory. We'll see what happens today. Before we get into the challenges today, though, I would just like to remind you guys that our like goal is 60 likes for this video, and as long as we reach that point, I will continue to bring you these lovely daily Wi-Fi battle uploads and all that fun stuff, and then hopefully back to the double uploads uh, daily when I get back from vacation at the end of the month. Uh, now, just a little bit of a, a refresher on my team here, our team, I guess, because we're doing this together. It's all about the, the team experience here. We're doing this uh, together. So I'm bringing the Focus Sash Lucario, Rest Talking Magneton with Charge Beam, Special Specs Flygon, uh, Anti-Lead Persian with Life Warp, Fake Out, Taunt, all that kind of stuff, uh, Specially Defensive Milotic, and then I'm actually missing one. I'm missing one. Who was the first person in our party? Because I clicked away, and now I can't even remember what it was. I don't even know. Oh, yeah, Choice Scarf Braviary. How could I forget him? He's like the MVP of the team. He killed everything. It's ridiculous. So our opponent, our first opponent today, he's bringing the Arcanine, Trevenant, Conkledur, Level 1, Auron. So that's something to watch out for. That thing is actually quite a bit of a threat, and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, Bisharp, and then the Greninja. So he's got a very, very cool team. I really like this team a lot. I know he's got some OU Pokemon, and I'm not the biggest fan of OU, um, just in general, but this is a really cool team, I have to say. So this should be a lot of fun to go up against. Uh, the level 1 Auron, um, basically what it likes to do is, obviously it has the sturdy ability, so we can't one-shot it. It has like that built-in, uh, whatchamacallit, the Focus Sash type deal. So even if we hit it with anything, because it's at level 1, it should just die. It'll just go down to 1 HP instead. And that is unfortunate because what they like to do is go for Endeavor on the first turn, and that will bring us down to 1 HP. And that's just absolutely terrible. And in last gen, it was crazy because with the perma weather, and usually they would come in on a sandstorm, you just would be dead, basically. And they usually also carry the Shell Bell, so any hit that they um, get on you is going to restore all of their health because they don't really have much of a health bar you know they don't have much HP because they're at level one so it's a crazy strategy he's probably gonna be carrying the move sandstorm I would guess because he doesn't have any kind of priority to finish you off like Rattatad does with the fear strategy um, with quick attack and that kind of stuff so we'll see what happens if he even brings it I don't even know uh, we're starting off with Braviary here my opponent's starting off with the Trevenant so I don't really see any reason to not go for the Brave Bird he's gonna go for the Protect to possibly see what I was going to do. Um, because most of the time, Braviary is choice locked into something. So I guess he just wanted to check what move I would be locking myself into. Depending on what he's bringing. I don't really think anything on his team wants to take it. Because I think, what was it? The only resist that he has is Auron. You don't want to switch that in. It needs to come in safely. So he's going to stay in. And he's going to take this Brave Bird to the face. And that's just going to straight up KO this, this Trevenant. Which is... That's, that's a feat in itself, because most of the time these Trevenants are physically defensive. Judging by the fact that he had Protect, he's probably a Substeeding set. That would be my guess, because they like to run Protect, Substitute, and then like Willow, Horn Leech maybe, something like that. Uh, so in comes the Auron. This is bad news for us. If I attack it, he's just going to Endeavor me, and that's going to be a big problem. So I feel like the best opportunity for me to succeed against this thing is going to be to switch out. That is what I'm thinking at this point. Because I don't want to just give up Braviary at all. That's just, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, I, I, and I don't want it to be at really low health either, because it might have to come back in and Brave Bird something. It depends on what his other Pokemon is at this point. And if it ends up being Conkledur, I really am going to need this Braviary to take it out, because nothing else on my team really wants to uh, go face-to-face -face with a Conkledur at all. And, I mean, they're really bulky, even on the physical side. I mean, they just have a lot of HP. So even physical hits, um, you know, if they're carrying the Assault Vest, obviously their special bulk is going to be a little bit more. But physical hits, because of the large HP stats, is just going to be, you know, difficult to get past. 
Um, I don't know what I'm saying. That may not have made any sense. Almost ran out of time there. So we're going to switch into the Lucario. He is going to go for the Endeavor, so that is going to hurt, but it's not going to bring us down to 1 HP. It's going to bring us down to 12. That's pretty much the exact same thing. So our Focus Sash is broken at this point, but we do have priority, so this thing is... Hmm, it might have to switch out. To be honest, it really might have to switch out. Because... Yeah, Endeavor, he can't kill me with anything. If he wants to set up the Sandstorm, I'm mean to that. So he's going to have a problem with this. Uh, he is going to switch out. I did go for the Bullet Punch, so we'll see what he wants to go into. It is going to be the Conqueror, so I'm really happy that I saved my Braviary. Um, just because I can survive my own Brave Bird with the Recoil, and I just would prefer that. So the Bullet Punch does absolutely nothing to this thing. Absolutely nothing whatsoever. I am bringing the Flygon as well. That's my third Pokemon. And at this point, I really feel like I need the Lucario. And I don't need the Flygon. Flygon can't do anything to his team. It's unfortunate. Flygon just really isn't that good on Battle Spot. Uh, special or physical. I really wanted to try out the special set because I feel like it's unique and it works well. It does work well in 6v6. I do know that much. I've uh, played around with it on Showdown and it works like a charm. So I will be bringing this to one battle. I don't know when. At some point. But uh, anyway, he's going to go for the Stone Edge there as I switch into the Flygon. I guess he was predicting maybe the Braviary to come in here. Uh, but that did not happen, so that does nothing to Flygon. But I can't really touch this thing either. He can Drain Punch me very easily. He's going to get all of his health back pretty much. I don't want to go for a Draco because it's going to lower my special attack. I don't think he can one-shot me. Um, even though Flygon doesn't have the best defenses, I really just don't think he can one-shot me. So we're going to go for the Earth Power here just to see how much it does. This thing is probably a Salt Vest. Yes, that is Assault Vest. That does absolutely nothing. There's the Drain Punch. That's going to almost take us out, leave us with 18 HP. He's pretty much going to recover all of the HP that I just did in damage to him with the Earth Power. So we're just going to go for it again. We're locked into it anyway, but he has the Mach Punch. That was pretty obvious, but there's no reason for me to switch there at all. Flygon goes down, and what that does is it gives me a free switch into the Braviary. He won't want to switch in the... Um, the Aron into this because then it'll just die so he may very well just stay in and try to mock punch me hope for a crit or something uh, but mock punch definitely isn't gonna take me out and I don't even know if a crit will I guess we'll just we'll see we'll see I'm just gonna spam that brave bird I feel like a town flame over here just spamming brave bird every time I come in but uh, Braviary is a lot cooler than town flame it really is one thing I do want to try though is I really want to try defensive town flame because Choice Bandit is just, it's kind of a ridiculous set. I used it for a while at the beginning of Gen 6, but it was just, it, I don't know, I got tired of it very quickly and everybody caught on now. Everyone's still using them and it's kind of like, uh, just stop. So I kind of want to use like a supportish defensive Talonflame. I, I haven't really figured out a spread for it or a moveset that I really want to use, but he gets access to Willow and Tailwind, so it has some potential there. Just want to figure it out a little bit, maybe do some testing on Showdown and then I'll try to breed one. So uh, that's that. The Conglater does go down there. We only live with 12 HP from that Mach Punch, so uh, that was not fun. But the Aron's going to come in, and this is pretty much just going to be a dead Aron. We know he has 12 HP because of the Endeavor from before, so Endeavor will do nothing. And a Brave Bird, in fact, is going to kill us, I guess. Or No, will it? No, it won't. It will not, because the Recoil should bring us down to, like, 8, I think, with the Sturdy. We'll see if that's uh, correct here, if my math is doing okay. There's the Sturdy. It is going to be 8 HP that we're left with. We'll see what he goes for. It's going to be the Sandstorm. I figured these things would carry Sandstorm. That seems, that seems, um, I guess, uh, something that they would do. I don't know. They, they kind of need the Sandstorm to finish off threats. Um, but it would be better if he brought something that started sand. Like, it was a sand weather inducer, like Tyranitar or Hippowdon even. But uh, it's still a really cool set. Works very, very well in 5th gen. So that is for sure. But uh, he's not going to get out of this one alive. Because Lucario is going to come in and bullet punch. But he's not going to let us do that because he's just going to forfeit at this point. So that is fine. And uh, that's going to be a victory for us. So it's a great way to start off this episode. That brings us up to a record of 63 and 42. So we have a 21 game differential. We've been sticking around the 20 to 22 game differential forever. We did just uh, very briefly drop down to the 18 game differential with that losing streak, but we went right back up. 
We'll see if we can get back up to 22 wins today with another um, match here. If we need to get another victory. If not, we'll be stuck at the 20-game differential again. And I'm going to change my team up for the next episode because this is, I believe, the third episode that we use this team. So uh, we, we should change things up a little bit. Definitely. And we're working on a three-game win streak, actually, now that I think about it. So this team is... Uh, it's, it's okay. The Heracross is cool. That might be... That, I don't know. He's got three potential Megas here in Heracross, Scizor, and Gangar. And judging by this team, I really can't tell which is which. He may have a couple of Megas. I don't know. The Scizor could very well be Choice Bandit as well. Or like a Swords Dance set. Who knows? He's got the Talonflame as well because everyone does. Rotom Wash, very common. The Rotom Wash actually doesn't have an item, so that might not be coming in this battle. He may have forgot to put an item on it. Um, he has the Gengar, as I mentioned, which could just be a special attacker, could be the Mega variant, and then Cresselia, which is right up there with Chansey and Blissey, and what else? Let's see, Glizcore, as far as uh, annoying Pokemon to face that are bulky and wallish, they tend to be very, very stallish, they like to use Toxic Stall, that kind of thing, uh, so hopefully we don't see that, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not feeling good about this one. This guy brought a serious laddering team. A team like this can really, really get high in the rankings. And my rating right now is kind of bad, to be honest. I've been using a lot of underused Pokemon lately. We had that losing streak. My, my rating just went down the toilet. We need to fix that. Definitely need to fix that. I might play off screen a little bit to raise my rating. I don't know. I don't even know. Uh, but I really want to bring the Flygon. I feel like if I don't bring the Flygon, he's definitely going to bring the Scizor. And I don't have anything else that has uh, fire coverage, I don't think. Unless I just um, derped there. But Flamethrower will definitely take that thing out. The only problem is that I have to lock myself into a move. So I, I don't know how I feel about this. We will see what happens. Uh, Mr. Triangle Man is issuing a challenge. And he's going to start off with, we don't know yet, because I'm starting off with Flygon. And he's leading off with Talonflame, and I have no answers to this. That is one downside to this team, is that I really have nothing that can take care of Talonflame. Nothing at all. If I, if I led with Persian here, I would have been somewhat okay, because I could fake out him, I guess. We're going to go into the Magneton and take the Brave Bird. I guess what I could do here is switch back out to the... The Flygon to take the impending Flare Blitz because even with the Eviolite, I don't know if Magneton can take that. He is Life Orb. He shows us that. Life Orb Flare Blitz is incredibly powerful. Even though Talonflame doesn't have the best attack stat, it's like 86 or something like that. Really not as high as you think it would be. I can take this thing out probably one hit with a Charge Beam, maybe, or just do a lot of damage. Maybe with the Recoil from Flare Blitz. We're going to try to stay in and live this. I don't know. I don't know if that's the best move. He might be locked. No, he's not locked into it because we saw the life orb. I'm going to go for it anyway. I really feel like this Talonflame could just sweep my team. Would not be the first time that I've been swept by a Talonflame on Battle Spot because it happens all the time because everyone has Talonflame. But it's a good Pokemon, so I can understand why everyone has it. And, uh, and to be honest, I'd rather see Talonflame than Mega Kangaskhan and all of the other Ubers that people like to bring on Battle Spot. That's going to be a dead Magneton. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. For some reason, I just thought I could live that, but I was mistaken. It's going to bring him down to about the 50% mark as far as health goes due to that recoil. Because the, the Life Orb recoil and the recoil from Brave Bird and Flare Blitz adds up really, really fast. Now we can go for a fake out. We might be able to kill this thing. Or at the very least, it will kill itself due to recoil. But wait. But wait. He has the Protect. Um, that's just terrible. That is absolutely terrible. Why do you have Protect on a Talonflame? That's crazy. I mean, that's good. I'm, I'm not, not knocking it at all. But uh, maybe this person is using the Talonflame as a, like, a VGC Pokemon as well. And he just decided to bring it to singles here on Battle Spot. I don't know. Protect is a really common move in doubles. It's almost a necessity on, like, just about every Pokemon. Um, so maybe that's what he's doing. I don't know, or maybe he just feels like Protect works on Talonflame on Battle Spot. It worked in this situation, but I mean, Persian isn't exactly the most common thing ever. He's going to Brave Bird me here. There's nothing I can do about it. I have no switch-ins at this point. The only thing I had to resist Brave Bird 
was going to be the Magneton, and that died pretty quickly. Persian doesn't have that much HP, so the recoil isn't going to be that much. And he's going to barely survive it, even with the Life Orb. Uh, so that is... That is unfortunate. All we have left is, is uh, Flygon. So we're going to get swept here. I don't know if... Well, he's not Choice Banded. Maybe Flygon can take a Brave Bird, although I don't... I really don't think so. Really don't think so at all. This is probably going to be a 3-0 sweep. Or I guess 2-0 because the Talonflame will go down to the recoil here. But yeah, this is definitely going to be a loss for us. I was not prepared for the Talonflame. My team just doesn't take it on very well. Which is kind of silly. Why would I bring a team that can't handle Talonflame on Battle Spot where they're everywhere? Uh, anyway, somehow Flygon took that. I don't know how. Uh, I'm going to lock myself into the Flamethrower just because I feel like he might have the Scizor and or Heracross. Um, and we're going to see what he's going to go out into here. It's going to be the Scizor, so that's great that I'm locked into the Flamethrower. But he's going to go for the very predictable Bullet Punch, and there's nothing I can do about it. Can't stop him, so this is going to be a 2-0. The score didn't change at all. The Talonflame still killed itself, the only difference was that uh, his Scizor had to come in and clean up. But uh, either way, that was going to be a loss. That was that was a shellacking. I really didn't do anything whatsoever. Really didn't do anything but just take hits. And the Talonflame just killed itself. So that didn't go as planned. Like I mentioned, uh, in the next episode, we are going to uh, change up the teams. Or team, I guess. It's just one team. Uh, so hopefully um, we can get a double victory, or at least... Get one victory and, you know, slowly pull out of this slump. I don't know if it's going to be a gradual thing or if it's going to be like we're just jumping out and we're done with the slump altogether. I knew the slump was coming, but I just was hoping that it wasn't going to last too long because there was a while where I just was winning battle after battle after battle. So your luck has to turn at some point. Anyway, I would like to thank you all for watching. Oh, before we go, the record is, what is it, uh, 63 and 43. So still that 20 game differential. Anyway, as I was saying, I want to thank you all for watching. As always, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It does help out a lot. It helps us reach that like goal and all that fun stuff. So I will see you for the next episode. But until then, game on.